Timothy is having to deal with. Can y'all bring my? I feel like I'm echoing up here. I'm, I'm glad I'm feeling that way because it sounds like I am. Timothy is having to deal with <clears throat> false prophets and false teachings and people ready for the end of days. 2,000 years later, and guess what? Still dealing with the same thing, aren't we? I was, uh, this first part of this week, I was on a uh, Christian station up in Augusta, and the person who was interviewing me had said, did you hear about the Star of Bethlehem? It's been sighted again. And I'm on TV going, no, did I miss something? And so she said, oh, yeah, you know, after 2,000 years, what does it mean? And I went, absolutely nothing. <laughs> because when he comes back, it ain't going to be no star in the sky, is it? <laughs> and as we took a break, I quickly got on the Internet. And supposedly, I think it was Venus and Mars have aligned. And it was the brightest in 2,000 years. And they said this might have been the star that he saw. And I went, except there's a problem. See, I don't think that that star that they saw was an actual star. And here's why. Now, we know they, they saw a star in Persia, right? The wise men saw the star. There's no doubt about that, right? And they even followed the star going back to Jerusalem. But when they get to Jerusalem, what do they say? They go to Herod and they say, where is he, right? And then he's like, why are y'all here? They said, well, we saw the star. And what was their response? What star? They didn't see the star, right? It was a sign for them to come. So that's why this star has never been seen from again, right? So we have to be very careful when we hear these things because as we're about to read, these are the things that get us in trouble in the end days. We so much try to follow the ooh and ahs that are going on that we forget that God made it very clear how he's coming back, right? right. And does everyone know how he's coming back? If you don't know, raise your hand and we will read it for you. <laughs> right? It says he's coming back like he left from the clouds. There's not going to be a star. Don't get excited when someone says, oh, the Messiah, he's over there. Or no, he's over there in the wilderness, because that's not it, is it? And that's what we see taking place. So let's start reading here. Verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceptive spirits and teachings of demons through the insincerity of liars who uh, co uh, consciousness are seared, who forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods. Sorry, I just got a text. From foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So let's stop there. So there's a warning here of in the end days that they're going to be liars and false teachers. Are we in the end days? Yes. yes. At least we think we're in the end days, right? And we're closer to the end days than the time that this was written 2,000 years ago, right? So... We're going to have those who are going to say, do not marry. Why are they going to say that? We don't know, do we? But they also say, and this is a scripture that, how many times, you know, the church will say this to us. Who they forbid marriage, right, and require absence from foods that God created to, receive, to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, right? For it is made holy by the word of God and, and prayer. So let's, it's July 4th, let's bring out the pig. Yep. <laughs> right? You've, how many of you have heard that? Come on. 
They've quoted it to you. It says that God created all things. And you know what you want to say to them? Let's do it. But first, before you eat that pig, I have some berries here that I want you to eat. Now, they're poisonous, but God made them, so they must be good. Here you go. You eat those berries, I'll eat the pig. After you're dead. Right? Maybe I'll eat it. You won't know, right? <laughs> so we have to be careful when people misquote the scripture. And boy, they love to do that, don't they? Because what this is talking about is also a situation in which the forbidden of marriage. Did God forbid marriage? So then why would God tell us not to keep kosher? See, there were teachings going on here and in Corinthians that was teaching people to abstain from being married and uh, eating certain things. Now, here in, uh, uh, in this area, they were able to drink. In, in Corinth, they were not. That was part of their thing to, to follow whatever they were doing. And so we have to be very careful to make sure we don't follow those false teachings of false gods. And if God, if, if, if we're told that we're following God, doesn't God want us to keep kosher? Yeah. Right? So that would be going against it if we did the other way. So you got to be very careful in how you read this scripture if you want it to make it sound like they're doing it. Actually, what the debate really was here most likely is that these groups were teaching people not to eat meat. You had to be a vegetarian. And so those were the things they were dealing with. Think about it. The word give thanksgiving. What do we do at Passover? We eat lamb and we what? Give thanks, right? So these are the things that we give thanks to the Lord. So that's really what this was dealing with. These false teachings, these false uh, demons that we're dealing with and trying to bring people away. And that's something we had to be very careful of in the end days. You know, so many people are worried about the Shemitah year, right? The world's coming to an end. The economy is falling. Look at Greece. It's already happening, right? Come on. Greece is already falling, right? Oh, wait. It's too early. It can't happen yet. they got to hold it off a little bit, right? We have to make sure that things that are happening in the normal world. Do you know every seven to eight years, the economy actually does this? This is a normal thing that takes place, right? So we have to be very careful when we put these things onto God's word and we make it as if, oh, the, the end is near, right? The world's coming to an end in September, right? So we can rack up those credit card bills, right? And party hardy and do whatever we want because the world's coming to an end. The economies of every nation is going to fall. What about Israel? Is Israel's economy going to fall? Why not? Israel's perfect? Uh, you know, they, they allow homosexual parades in their country, so aren't they going to get killed too, right? You know, we have to be very careful to make sure that we don't super-spiritualize the word. We need to be willing to stand firm on it and understand it and understand that, the, you know what, the stars in the heaven are signs for us, absolutely. But we can't try to guess God. There's not going to be the rebirth of the star of Bethlehem. That's not how he's coming back, is he? We need to stand firm on the truth. And if the world is coming to an end, you better start preaching, aren't you? You better tell your friends to be prepared. Because if not, how are you <coughs> preparing them for what is to come? So we need to continue to understand what's taking place here. For some reason, my screen is acting up, so I'm going to go on to verse 5. That's verse 6. If you put these things before your brother, you will be a good servant of Yeshua Messiah, or Messiah Yeshua, whichever way you want to look at that. Being trained in the what? 
words of faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed. So that's the key thing to understand. What are we supposed to teach? We're not supposed to teach the fringe, right? We're supposed to teach the word of God. We need to stay solid in his word, and that way we can be ready, set and ready to go. And that's what God's calling us to do as we continue in verse 7. Having nothing to do with the what? Irrelevant, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for what? Godliness. You know, so many people get caught up in the latest fad, right? Remember years ago it was jumping over pews and uh, laughing in the spirit. Remember that? Where is it now? Any idea? Oh, remember the gold dust that fell? And people gathered it all up and made millions, right? Right? You know, what, what was the other fact? Well, they didn't gather it up because they never could, but, you know, there were all these things that come and go, right? But the God's word, what? Stays forever. It's solid. It's a solid foundation because it's not built up on myths. We need to be very careful when we do God's word to follow his ways. Let's go on. For, the, for while the bodily training is of some value, godliness is of the value in what? Every way as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. Next, there we go. For, for to this end we toil and strive because we have our hope set in the living God who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. So here's the, what, he's, what Paul's now telling Timothy to make sure that he gives with us. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Timothy was not an old person, was he? And sometimes, you know, I remember when I first got in the ministry, I was 30 years old, and those, those oldies, those 50-year-olds, which I'm about to become one <laughs> in another year, right, boy, oh, you don't know enough, you know, you've got to be you know, down there. But yet, Timothy was told, don't let that bother you. I remember the uh, MJAA, which is the, uh, one of the big organizations, this past weekend they have a conference every year up in Pennsylvania. It's their big annual conference, and people come from all over. And one night they do youth night. <coughs> all the other nights are all the old-time fogies who've been there for years who get to come and speak. But usually on that... That youth night, they put in a, a young, up-and-coming rabbi in. One year, it was my year to do that. And they had a group called New Jerusalem, and they played, and they did rock and roll, and they were a great group. And I was told, you better have a good opening line. And I looked at the person who told me that, and I said, I do not have an opening line. I was ready to go in and do the word, right? we got to be ready, but we can't be afraid of what we're doing. When I was talking, I made a comment about Mini-Me, for all those who remember the movie, right? Of course, all the kids laughed about it, and Judy was next to our rabbi at the time, and he looked at her and said, Mini-Me, he said, don't, she goes, don't worry, the kids understand. You know, we had to be able to not be afraid to stand and share the word, no matter what age we are. Matter of fact, from the mouth of babes comes some of the greatest wisdom. We need to make sure we can stand. And that's what the, the word to Timothy was. Stand, show them what it means to be a true believer. You don't have to grab on to the latest fad that's going into the congregations. And we've had our shares over the years, haven't we? 
you know we have them still now I, you know it's it now a lot of the me, you know the mega churches it's come drink coffee with us they have coffee bars and they give away stuff is that really pulling the people in for the right ways it's the word of God that we need to stand on and we continue in verse 13 <clears throat> Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture. Now, I want to th- you to think for a second. What Scripture is Paul telling Timothy to read publicly? Well, no, it's the New Testament, isn't it? But it has to be. That's the Scripture, right? See, if, you, if I said that in the church today, what would they be yelling out? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, right? Except those books weren't written yet, right? Or if they were written, they weren't canonized, right? So the scripture that he's talking about is the Torah, very clear. So again, he wouldn't be going against the Torah in the first part of it and then bringing it in here at the last part of this chapter. So he's telling us to come together and read the scripture, right? to exhort and to teach just like we do here at the congregation each and every week those who come and read from the scripture get to share what that scripture means to them and that's so important in coming together and learning from one another we have our Torah club classes that bring us in to that understanding of the deeper understanding of God's word that's what it's all about because when you when we understand God's word We can understand and and separate the truth from the falsehood. Let's continue. Verse 14. Do not neglect the gift you have, which was uh, was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. So again, this is a, remember, this is a personal letter to, Paul, to Timothy, right? It's encouraging and telling him what to do. So it's again a reminder of his calling that God has given to him. Verse 15. Practice these things, immerse yourselves in them, so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Uh, persist in this, for by so doing, you will what? Save both yourself and your hearers. When we proclaim God's word, the truth comes out. You know, some messages you give and you hear are salvation messages. They're they're geared towards the person who is seeking God. But other messages are meant for different things to get deeper into the word, right? But even through those messages, when they're heard, people get saved. Because God opens the heart. He's able to fill that special place. So as Timothy is getting ready and understanding what his calling is, he also sees again that warning of the false teachers. Don't get God so caught up in the things that may happen or might happen or could happen, but stick with the truth. The star of Bethlehem did not magically reappear on June 30th. How many of y'all had heard that? Some of y'all had. I had not. I was like, what in the world are they talking about? And even, I think I joked around and said, did Fox News report this? And when I looked, actually one of the Fox affiliates in some city actually had reported on it. But it's scary when people think, oh, well, that must be it. And here's the thing about following astronomy, not astrology, but astronomy. They have computer programs that can take it all the way back, right? Right? And guess what? If they had done that, they would find out that it didn't happen at that time. But no one took the time to do that. Oh, this must be it. Right? Things are happening. The blood moons. You know what's so funny? I got to tell you something. 
And I'm not against the blood moons. They exist, don't they, right? There's no problem with that. We've seen through history that things have happened. But I got a call from my dad the other day. And he said, now, and, you know, my dad knows, you know, he's been in Judaism all his life, right? And he said, I have a Christian friend, and he's telling me about the blood moons. What's the big deal? See, in Judaism, this is not a big deal, right? They do happen. They happen all the time. Now, the fact that they happen on these dates and things have happened are interesting. And again, they're signs of the time. But those same moons have brought good things and bad things. So how do we, why do we always think that this is the bad thing? Just because our, our, our society is doing things that are wrong, guess what? They've been doing that for centuries. Yes, what our country did, what, our, you know, what they voted on and are allowing is wrong. But you know what? The church doesn't have to agree with it, do we? And we certainly don't have to abide by it. We know the truth and we can stand on God's word. We need to be that light to the world. Because yes, guess what? Our world is going to, a hell, to hell in a handbasket. No doubt about it. That's why Yeshua had to come the first time, right? Yeah. Guess what? He's going to have to come again. He ain't coming for a great world. Because if we're all doing everything we were supposed to do, <coughs> he wouldn't be coming back. Right? So let's be prepared. But let's do it in the right way. Let's seek his face. Don't get pulled into the latest fad but stand firm on the truth because that's what will set you free amen? amen I want everyone to bow your head and close your eyes as I drink some water <clears throat> my voice is definitely going I want to ask you right now those of you watching online those of you here in the congregation if you don't have that relationship with God, if you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of you guiding you to show you the truth, the devil wants to show you the falsehood. If you're ready to receive him into your heart, all you need to do is say a simple prayer and receive him. If that's you, if you're watching online, if you're watching live or... Uh, archived. All you have to do is contact us, and wherever you are, we will pray with you around the world. We will call you and pray with you. That's prayer of salvation. But if you're here right now in the congregation, all you need to do is raise your hand and say a simple prayer. Matter of fact, we'll say it in support with you. Is there anyone? Anyone at all? Then, Abba Father, we just come before you right now. Lord, we ask you to be with us. Prepare us, Lord. Don't let us get pulled astray. Show us the wisdom of those who are trying to teach your word. And Lord, let us not be caught in the snare by those who are trying to teach the devils. Lord, be with us now. We ask this in Yeshua's precious name. And everyone said... Amen. Amen. I think we have a couple of announcements.